when people are saying how bad ISIS is and Al Qaeda and things like that, you can look at what America did to uh, uh, in Native Indigenous people. They, they did very similar, if not worse, tragedies. Yeah, and they forced us in a very, very uh, tricky way into becoming Christians. So today, most Native people think like Christians, even when they're where they're trying to return to the traditional way. They still look at their culture through Christian eyes. For example, the word Wakatanka. If you go to any Lakota or Dakota or Nakota speaking reservation and you ask somebody, what does Wakantaka mean? They're going to say 99% of the time, they're going to say, this is God. And that's not true. Wakantaka is an organization of many people. And there is more than one. And they have the same name. There's more than one organization. And they're all called Wakantanka. The reason why there's more than one is because each organization works in a different way to accomplish the same thing, but they do it in a different way. That's why there's more than one organization. That's Wakantanka. Yeah, but uh, when when we were put on reservations, our uh, you know, first of all, they were like prison camps. And we were not allowed to have any kind of weapons. And so this means we couldn't go hunting. You know, we couldn't go gathering wild vegetables. We couldn't go fishing. All we had to eat was whatever the government gave to us, which was incredibly unhealthy foods. And as a result, we were hit physically. And in the Lakota way, the self has four parts, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. Okay, so we were hit physically in the physical part. Then our language and ceremonies were declared illegal on April 10th, 1883. So that means we were hit spiritually and emotionally. That means only one part left, the mind. And this is how we became weak-minded. So in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the churches saw this. They came on the reservation and saw that we are ready to be brainwashed then they took advantage of that and and they learned our culture they learned our language to get us to go to church and to go to church also gave an opportunity for indians to see each other because in the early 1900s there was a law created that uh cut the reservation up into parcels of land and every family was given a parcel of about 160 acres and they were told to be farmers and and so a lot of indians are not agricultural so they didn't know what to do yeah so, and, and but this meant the families were split up yeah the the camp the camps were split up now they couldn't see each other anymore so going to church was an opportunity for everybody to see each other. So they looked forward to that. And while they're sitting in church, see, they're weak-minded. And so they're hearing what this priest is saying. And slowly, they start to accept it and become Christian. So a lot of things that, uh, you know, when they look at our culture, they look at it through Christian eyes. They're not looking at it through Lakota eyes. Okay? And then, of course, the boarding school experience happened a little bit afterwards, which children were taken to these schools that were located hundreds of miles off the reservation and were basically tortured if they spoke their language or even talked about their home. And so the, another brainwashing went through there. Now, the children who survived, because many died, yeah, many died at the schools from abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, mental, spiritual, emotional abuse. Yeah, Some children couldn't eat because they were so brokenhearted. They ended up dying. Some were abused, as I said, in other ways. So many children died in these schools, but the ones who made it through, they didn't really survive. 
they're traumatized. And some of them are still alive today. They they would be in their 90s, some of them, or hundreds, yeah, because they some of them are still alive, and uh, they you know they didn't want their children to go through this when they grew up. So they didn't teach them the language. They didn't teach them the culture. So this is why you know six seven generations later, most native people they don't know how to speak their language, and whatever they know about their culture, they see it through a Christian. Uh, in, interpretation, yeah, because uh, see, when the priests were on the reservation, they would, they would, in, you know, really try to influence Indians to only accept certain stories that, that were, you know, that would go, you know, uh, in harmony with the Bible. If anything contradicted the Bible, they would say that's from the devil. Yeah? Like, for example, the white buffalo calf pipe story, a lot of people know the story, but there's one part, in this story, there is this part where when this white buffalo calf lady is talking to these two guys, one reaches out for her, uh, you know, because he wants to have sex with her, and a cloud comes and, and covers them, and you hear screaming, uh, you know, lights flashing in this cloud, and when the cloud lifts, the woman is standing there, and on the ground is the skeleton of the man who tried to touch her. That's all they say. In Lakota Star Knowledge, it tells you what happened. Yeah, that when this man tried to penetrate this woman sexually, that part of her body ripped off his flesh it consumed him yeah it it ripped off all his flesh and organs and everything and consumed him and all that was left was his skeleton and his hair and rattlesnakes going through his rib cage that's the part of the story that most people don't know could be a scary movie too yeah you have sex with a woman and and uh you're eaten by that certain part of the body because you're an unhealthy man see that 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 part it doesn't fit with you know cuz most lakota people they see the white buffalo calf woman like an angel and that's christian thinking too now, I'm not saying she was a bad lady, okay? All I'm saying is that there was a part of her body that consumed his flesh as he was trying to have sex with her. Most people don't know that part. And there's another part in the story where she says that they must kill four Crow Indians. From one of them, they're supposed to cut his left ear off and, the, and for the other three uh, warriors, they have to take their scalps. And then they tie this, the hair of the scalps. They make a hole in the ear, and they tie this, uh, these three scalps to that hole and attach this to the pipe. A lot of Lakota people don't know that part either. There's a reason why. Yeah, When you understand... Lakota Star Knowledge, you understand what this woman, why you understand why this woman said these things. So the, the, the most, most Native people don't know this. So when they hear these part, these two parts that I just said, when they hear these, they, they can't accept it because they, they've, they've, you know, they see the white buffalo calf woman as, like a female Jesus or something that he can do, that she can do no wrong. Well, this is not about right or wrong. This is about life. Okay. So um, another thing is that I'll give you one clue to what this means. Okay. I'll give you one clue. One when you learn things, a lot of people only focus on how to do something. Okay. But that's only half of the way to learn. The other half is learning how not 
to do something. It's the other half of learning. And that's really valuable. This is why we don't see mistakes as a bad thing. As long as we learn from it, it's not a bad thing. It's a blessing because it gives us knowledge. And that can lead to wisdom and peace. Okay? That's kind of a clue there. Anyway, um, so this, this, this is how Native people are today. They're, they don't really think like our ancestors. Yeah? So when, when Native people want to be traditional, everything is serious. They don't realize that there's humor. Even in ceremonies, there's humor. Yeah? It's important because that's part of life. So if you go into a sweat lodge and somebody says, okay, everybody, be serious now. We're starting the ceremony. We're going to bring out, we're going to bring in, uh, you know, a pipe to pray with and, and, uh, so everybody, you know, clear your thoughts and, and let's, let's, let's do this. Aho, 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 they all say. <laughs> this is not traditional at all. This is bullshit. Yeah, that's, that's not how it goes. In the in the sweat lodge ceremony, whatever you're feeling has to come out. For some people, it's sadness. For some people, it's anger. For some people, it's fear. And for some people, it's happiness. Because you're cleansing. So it's okay to be funny. Yeah, If something is bothering you, you tell it there. Because you might get an answer. And believe me, when when you're finished... It 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 comes out, yeah. You feel good, but if you go in there and say, "Okay, everybody, be serious now," then when you come out, whatever is bothering you is still inside you. Whatever pissed you off is still inside you. Whatever you were scared of is still inside you. So the ceremony didn't even work because you did not let it work. You see what I mean? So in a real sweat lot ceremony, this, there's humor. Because some people need to express it. Because yeah? it, 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 it might actually help somebody else inside the sweat lodge who's feeling a little bit nervous. In a real traditional sweat lodge, everybody helps each other. Yeah? One of the one one and one of the ones that I was in, I just had come from work and I was feeling a little bit stressed and so I was having a little bit of difficulty at the beginning of the ceremony and there was a Cree Indian in there and he said, uh, here, take this, he said, hey, some kind of a root. He said, Just put this under your tongue and, and go ahead and lay down. He said, There's room enough to to lay down, just uh, it'll help you. He said, he said, Okay, so thanks. So I did what he said, and yeah, just in a minute or so, I was all relaxed. Everything was cool. See how we help each other? Yeah, then uh, then somebody cracked a joke, and we all start laughing, and this is in the middle of the ceremony. Yeah, this this is part of our culture. Humor is a really important part of our culture. <laughs> 